Well, it's a little better than last time. Let's just start. All right, here we go. Hi friends, told you it wasn't gonna be eight months. <laughs> Please, please applaud me for doing the bare minimum. Before we get started today, I just wanted to say, holy sh the outpouring of love and support, just overall excitement and general positivity. I hate to say that I wasn't expecting that because of course my audience is so kind and so generous, but I think a little part of me still thought I was gone far too long to even be worthy of that response. Boy, did you prove me wrong. It was honestly so emotional, kind of bracing myself for the worst and just receiving unfathomable amounts amounts of generosity. I was not expecting the amount of responses that I received, but you guys really came through. I read every single one of those comments. All of it was extremely positive, constructive. I couldn't even say it was really criticism. It was really more suggestions on where I should go from here. And the overwhelming response was just, we love listening to you and your thoughts, which like, pfft, I don't even like listening to my own thoughts, so. But hearing that people actually give a crap about my thoughts and feelings was really revelatory. And this is a large part of my insecurity about my content. And I put this actually in a response to a comment. It was a revelation to discover that you all are here, not just for review content. I'm always thinking my artistry cannot stand alone on this channel as the main draw for an audience. To hear that my brand of artistry is enough on its own to retain a regular audience, to have people coming back. I don't think that was something that I believed. So to hear that feedback externally was really gratifying. So to every single one of you who showed up in the comments, thank you so, so much. I'm gonna try my level best not to let all of that thoughtful, positive reinforcement fall in deaf ears, not let my inner saboteur get in the way. I'm just going to accept it, absorb it. Also, if you haven't seen my triumphant return to YouTube, you can find that video up here. So one of the themes that kept coming up in the comments was that most of you were actually kind of tired of constantly seeing new releases. I get it. The release cycle is exhausting. The feedback that kept coming up was that you actually wanted to see more of what I already have in my collection. Things that once they've already been showcased on the channel, they kind of just sit on a shelf. And you were absolutely right. I think we should do less of that. And we should actually do more of what I think was originally termed as shop my stash videos. A style of video that was popularized on YouTube, I think, as a direct retaliation to trying to keep up with the release cycle of makeup. And this style of video for makeup content creators was coined as shop my stash, which are so fun. I always really enjoy them, but they fell out of fashion. I'm not entirely sure why. I just think content goes through cycles. But anyway, the vast majority of you wanted to see more of what I currently already own. So why the heck not? Let's just do an old fashioned shop my stash video. And while we're at it, why don't we do a little tour of the new space? So of course this intro is already way too long. I have blathered on long enough. Let's just get right into this shop my stash video and get started. So I actually already pre-recorded all of this footage before I sat down to film because it does take me a minute to set up the lights, camera, and table. So why don't we just pass this on over to Pass Maddie. Take it away. Hello, this is Maddie from the past coming at you. I thought I would give you a little tour. Also, I already said this in the intro probably, but we are going to do a shop my stash, which means that we are going to go through all of what's back there. I will show you how I store all of my makeup in here, how everything works, and we'll pick some makeup up along the way to play with today. So I do have a place to go tonight, which means I do have to take that into consideration when choosing makeup makeup today. So I think this is going to be fun. But yeah, let's turn the camera around and have a look at the space. So this is the side of the room you have already seen. This is my backdrop, which is so exciting. I've done a little bit more work decorating these shelves because I realized a lot of these lower shelves actually are in frame. So mom was very kind as to relinquish all of the art that was in the previous studio so that I could have it in this setup as well, which if you didn't know is actually all family art. This is all art painted by either my dad's sister, Julia, my aunt, or my dad 
dad's mother, my grandmother. Oh yeah, here you can see my little fold card table that I use to film on now. It was a compromise because I obviously don't have space to have a desk in the center of the room full time because we have our own desks that we actually use. This is our office. Not only that, we also use this space to practice in. So we have our keyboard here. I understand that not everyone needs a piano in their office, but you know, artists, am I right? I really love how this whole wall has turned out in the end. I think it really came together. And it's really nice to just look at all this while I'm filming because it's, you know, stuff that has sentimental value and good memories attached to it. There's another piece from my nanny. She's got a little, it's my little kitty cat. So I can use this monitor for my laptop, but I can also use this monitor for my filming setup. So I actually connect this monitor to my camera. Super handy and most monitors, if you have the right connecting cable can be used in this way. And this, this is where all of my makeup lives. Actually, that's a lie. This is where most of my makeup lives, but all of my palettes, if you didn't already clock, live behind me on the shelves. I do use some of them for set deck because some of them are just like pieces of art in my opinion. I think they are too beautiful not to display in this way. Clock the Animal Crossing shrine at the bottom there. But you can see all of my palettes there. So we're gonna pick one of those today. I'm really excited because there's a few things in there that I actually haven't touched yet or put on the channel. And I think I know which one I'm going to go with today. Why don't we just grab it right now? Okay, let's just grab it right now. I think it's gonna be down here. I always forget just how indie forward my palette collection is until it is all in front of me on display. And then I'm just thinking like, wow, that's a lot of duties and taxes. The palette in question is over here. You thought I was gonna pick this one, didn't you? Sorry, we were gonna save that for another video. I know, I know, I'm the worst, but I think this is what we're picking up today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, give me glow. I haven't even dipped into this. There's lots in here that will go with the outfit that I am planning to wear tonight. So I immediately thought of pulling this out finally, instead of just saving it for a rainy day. Today is that rainy day. We are already going off the rails and I've already been filming for 15 minutes. Oh, what will I learn? Moving on. Oh, hi, it's editing me here. Apparently I am so bad at room tours. I have not yet scrubbed through all the footage, but I already know that it is A, all over the place and to not coherent. For someone who, you know, speaks to very large audiences for a living, I'm historically a terrible public speaker. Lord knows why I'm doing YouTube. Also, I don't know why I didn't just use my Yeti during that whole segment. I'm an idiot. One of the main things that I wanted to show you all that I didn't get to show you because I just, didn't. It's actually one of the main cool features of this room. If I were doing a TikTok, that was just things in my home studio that just make sense. This would be one of those things. And I really wanted to show you guys one of the main design choices that we made when we started compromising on a shared workspace. You know, how are we going to make a live YouTube background work while also being able to film self tapes? Enter this. It was Daniel's idea. He sourced it himself. He put it up. Two giant poles that run from floor to ceiling that are tension fitted. And then there's just like three racks on top. Best part is that we don't have to set it up and tear it down every single time we need to film a self tape. Let me show you. <laughs> Sure is a little bit more sophisticated than my brilliant idea of just putting a shower curtain rod from wall to wall. Anyway, just wanted to pop in here and make sure I point out one of the more integral design features of this workspace because apparently I don't know how to YouTube. Back to you filming, Maddie. Let's get into this little corner here. I'm so excited. This little basket here that lives on top of the makeup storage drawers. It's kind of where I load up the makeup that I'm going to use for the video. A lot of my base routine lives in here, stuff that I know I'm not going to swap out very frequently, but it's so nice to finally have all of my makeup in one place. I used to have a stash of makeup that lived at my house, just a small one. And then the majority of my collection lived at the old studio. So there's something really satisfying about having it all finally come together. The audacity of me to film this with so many fingerprints on these drawers, please ignore that. Let's just go through drawer by drawer and see what's up. All right, this is mostly like mirrors, my brush belt, my reflector. Actually, I will need that for filming today. 
just bits and bobs, odds and ends in here that I don't really need access to all the time. Just live down here. This is my FX drawer. It's where all of my cream paints, a lot of contact solution for whatever reason. Things that I've collected here and there that don't really fall under the glam category. Next drawer is the base drawer. All right, what am I gonna use for my base today? I think what I'm going to pull today is the Makeup Forever HD foundation. I just wanna be glam tonight. So we're gonna do a little bit more full coverage today. And then I think to counterbalance that, let's pick up Flower Beauty the Light Illusion Concealer. I have not touched this in a minute. I've been taking the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer with me on contract, just because it's cheaper and it's easier to replace. You can find it more readily in most drugstores. This one I only see in a handful, so I don't like to get too married to it with my routine. It is one of my favorite drugstore concealers of all time, so I think that's all we need from that drawer. And of course, it being me, I of course have an entire drawer dedicated to blushes. I think today I'm going to pick up Sandy Cheeks by Melt, the cream blush light. It's a very terracotta, almost orange leaning. And it pairs really well with this ages old MAC blush that was gifted to me by my friend and colleague, Cynthia. It's in the shade Like Me, Love Me. It's very peachy, but it has such a nice finish to it. And I think these two will pair beautifully together today. And of course, I think we're just going to pick up my old standby, my good friend, the Divine Blush Trio by Pat McGrath Labs. Because you can't really go wrong with galactic sun you just can't i think that's good for blush and highlight i don't want to go too crazy on it today because i'm gonna have to be in person with people today so i don't want to blind them too severely speaking of blinding people too severely we have the highlight drawer Ooh. And i don't know if i'm gonna actually grab anything from the store today i don't want to go too overboard on the highlight today i say this now but you know it is me after all remember when i pulled this out in every single video the pixie x reach loves palette i still I love this palette. Next drawer up, we are moving on to lips. Da, da, da. The stark realization I had when I realized the ratio of glosses to actual lipsticks. It's very illuminating to see it laid out before me like this. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with the lip combination today. Definitely a little nude action. I love drizzle for that. These glosses just are the best. They apply beautifully. They reapply beautifully. Also, why the hell not? Let's pull spice. I feel like it goes with the color story today. And like, how satisfying are these nudes to look at side by side? Like moving on, let's check out. Okay, so this isn't the most organized drawer, but it's a lot of my single shadows, single pot glitters, stuff that has no real category. For lip liner today, I'm gonna pull out a really old standby, which is Versatile Chestnut by Makeup Forever. It is one I've had in my collection for years now, literal years. But if you're doing a high contrast nude lip, this is like the place to start. For eyeliner, I definitely wanna go with a dark brown. Where is she? I have one that I just kind of gravitate towards regularly. It's this pure on point line liner. I got this as a freebie when I ordered something else from them. It's in the shade down to earth, but it's just a really nice long wearing dark, dark brown and it doesn't irritate my waterline. So I always pick this one up. Last drawer is the last drawer. It's going to be hard to decide because I do need to wear my glasses tonight. So I need to pick a lash that is not going to graze the lenses, which is one of the worst sensory feelings if you have sensory issues, which I do. Definitely can't use chemise today. Those are wild. I might take a pair of Berkeley lashes and just sniff them. These could work as a half lash. Ooh, yeah. Sleepy Starlet. We love. Wow. Okay. Tell me you have a favorite lash without telling me you have a favorite lash. Still hanging on for dear life to this untouched, still in the package set from Pure X Robbie and Christy. Let's see what happens when we cut Sleepy Starlet in half. I have high hopes. So we have our makeup picked out. We have a palette to play with. Eee! So now all I've left to do is set up for filming, which takes a minute. So I'm gonna go do that off camera and we shall reconvene momentarily. One eternity later. All right, here it is, a full face of not new makeup. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm especially excited to finally bust this out. This has sat in my collection for God knows how long at this point. I did buy it as a new makeup release. What better excuse to bust out a palette that has been sitting there collecting dust for I think going on multiple years at this point. And oh my God, I mean, can we just, everything that I want in a color story, <laughs> it's showing up way more teal blue on camera, but it actually is more green. But I think today we're gonna focus on the, <laughs> surprise, surprise, warm tones. I actually have an event this evening 
Ring. It is the Arts Club season announcement for 2025. Excited and scared to hear what they have planned. I can talk more about that later while I'm doing my makeup for this god dang event. Let's just zoom on in and start putting on a face. This video is already too long. I can already sense it in my brain. I will be wearing this ratty old t-shirt tonight. Okay, but do any of you have that shirt, that one shirt that you know when you put it on, you're going to feel confident and you know it's a little ratty and you know it probably doesn't fit the occasion, but somehow you just kind of make it work. In short, I'm gonna make this t-shirt work for me tonight. I'm gonna make this t-shirt work. I have a brand to maintain, okay? Okay, I have a lot of kinks to iron out still about this setup. One of them being, where the heck do I put my mirror when I'm filming? Is that horribly annoying if I just have it here? Comment down below. I also have my hand mirror, but I often find that it throws off the white balance when I use it and put it in front of my face. So I'm trying not to use it as much as I used to. I already did my skincare this morning and I finished everything off with the Ritual Defee Thorn Oil. Like I said, I have drunk the Kool-Aid. I'm fully a Ritual Defee convert at this point and I'm not sorry about it. I think I might still mix my foundation with a glowy primer just a little bit because this one do be pretty full coverage. Is that a problem today? I don't know yet. I don't know if I've ever actually used my my fingers to apply makeup forever. We're gonna try it today and see what happens. Let's just throw a little bit of this in there, why not? We actually have to go out in public. That is definitely the time for experimentation with bases. That Danessa Myrick's Yummy Skin Primer just <laughs> smells so much like, like a Calgon spray. I can't remember exactly what scent. It's like a pear almost, like a very artificial pear or apple or melon. It's melon. It just reminds me of going to the drugstore as a kid and the urge to buy buy a new body spray to feel like a sophisticated lady. Me having the worst skin imaginable right now is also not helping. I have been plagued with dryness, with irritation, almost nonstop for what feels like months. It just kind of reached a, a head in the last couple weeks and I just keep waiting for it to calm down and it just never does. It's been a long time since I've had such dry and flaky skin, especially around my teeth. Zone, so I don't know what it is, if it's just stress or if it's the combination of skincare I'm using. She's not happy. Let's just say that she is not happy. Oh, I really do love this foundation though. It is really versatile. Like for day to day, the three drop weightless serum foundation from Ritual is fantastic. It basically just wears like a moisturizer, but for something that is more medium coverage, it is just so lightweight. It feels like you're wearing nothing. And I love the finish and I love the texture of it. It's just so skin-like which is my favorite finish of foundation. If it's too glowy, it just makes me look like the beige version of the Blue Man group. But if it's too matte, it just picks up on all that texture. For my 30 plus girlies, a satin finish foundation is kind of where it's at. I have not used this for a minute, so I thought I'd pull this out. The undertone of this is so perfectly neutral and cool tone for me, and it just glides on. It's not too liquidy, but it's not overly creamy. As much as I love the e.l.f. Hydrating Camel Concealer, it does have a very thin, Thick. Almost gooey texture. I've just never seen this kind of texture in a drugstore concealer before. Like all drugstore brands though, it could have a better shade range, 100%. Okay, I'm getting impatient. Let's just blend it all together with my foundation brush. This one is by NYX, by the way, this foundation brush, and it's actually pretty decent. I bought it because my other one broke over the summer. It just basically exploded. And because I didn't have access to my entire brush collection at the time, I ended up just picking this one up at London Drugs and it works very nicely. So far, so good. For cream contour, I'm just going in with what I've been using lately, which is the Milk Sculpt Stick. So easy to apply so easy to blend. It's very idiot proof, which I love. And also it looks really great on bare skin. When I would go out in the summer sometimes, I just didn't want to put on foundation, but I wanted to sculpt and bronze myself just a tiny bit. It's great as just a little quick blend in with your fingers over a sunscreen kind of situation. And it doesn't move around once you've applied it, which is also really nice when you want to use it on its own. So I think I am gonna do a palette potential soon because I've been meaning to do one on the Serenity palette for ages now. I think it's by Cosmic Brushes. Yet another palette that has just been sitting in my collection for well over a year at this point. Never touched, never swatched. It's big enough that I think we can do a full series on it. So if you still wanna see that, let me know your thoughts. I know it's well past relevancy, but as y'all have emphatically reiterated, you do not give a flying fuck 
about relevancy. So I just might. All right, we pulled out Sandy Cheeks today, which is a perfect terracotta orange cream blush from Melt, which I think will be perfect today as a base. Also, it just, ugh, look at how it melts. She is overexposed. It's just if I turn down the ISO, I've tried to research these things on my own and I just don't have a grasp or an understanding of exactly the inner workings of this. <laughs> what I should do is take a course on it, but I fear that the equipment I'm using is already out of date. I bought this camera back in 2018. The first video I ever filmed with that is still on my channel. I'll link it up here. And back then when I bought it, it was already an older model of camera. I'm just gonna do a quick blend around this cheek situation. I know we're gonna layer a lot on top of this situation, but this is just so satisfying to look at. To set, I'm just gonna go in with some Huda Easy Bake in the shade Cupcake. It has the most gorgeous pinky undertone as opposed to peach or yellow. And it just really works for my skin tone. So if you're like me and you lean very rosy, very cool toned, this is the powder for you. Also, how do y'all feel about the reels I've been posting on Instagram? I've had the time to produce them, so I've been having a lot of fun producing that content, but I don't know why I never just did what I am doing now, which is take already existing footage that was just gonna end up on the cutting room floor anyway, and just repurpose it into a companion piece for the long form content. I think I was too wrapped up in what the trends were at the time on TikTok for makeup content, which was all about the transition. It was all about the transition and people were so good at it. And I was so intimidated by all of those creators. I just never had the wherewithal to set up that shot and be able to keep that shot consistent so I could do a really seamless transition. It just seemed like so much extra work that I just didn't have the time or patience for. But I kind of didn't realize that TikTok or Reels short form content has many different formats now. And I've made peace with the fact that I'm not good at transitions. And when I do it, it just feels cringy and eggy but you know what I am good at? <laughs> a little soothing voiceover. So I just had to put two and two together and I don't know why I couldn't do that before now, but she got there eventually folks. Took her a goddamn minute, but here we are. So I would love to know your thoughts on the reels. Let's go in with my favorite hand-me-down blush. This is Like Me, Love Me from MAC. They still make this by the way, and they do now sell it not only at MAC, but at Sephora. The nice thing about MAC is that a lot of their products are just staples. None of this limited edition garbage. I am so over the idea of limited edition makeup. Can we just stop? Can we just stop making things limited edition? Cause at this point, every release is limited edition. It like loses all of its meaning. Like, ooh, there was one collection I wanted so badly to purchase, but I just couldn't afford it. Was the Melt and Bailey Sarian collab. You know, you know that was right up my alley. I mean, Come on. I don't even know if it's in stock anymore, but with how makeup production has evolved, it's almost unheard of that something gets reproduced. And for years it's just been, well, if you snooze, you lose. Or you have to find some sleaze bag reselling it on eBay for an exorbitant markup, but just so disheartening to the general consumer who can't afford something when it launches and then just misses out forever. It is a privilege or just a sign of your financial discipline to be able to purchase something on launch day. Or if you're like me, just be a sign of your lack of self-control. I am an absolute clown and I have zero regrets. I guess look out for that video. Oh boy. A fool. An absolute fool. Back to you in the studio, Maddie. Either you are in a privileged enough position to be able to afford to buy something on launch day, or you go into debt doing it. Without fail, every tax season, I go through all of my receipts, like the good little self-contractor I am. And the amount of money I spend on makeup alone, I think is at least twice, maybe three times as much as any other expense category. That has lessened over the last couple years. But for the average person, it's still crazy. I barely keep up with probably less than 1% of launches and releases that are happening all the time. Even knowing how much money I spend on makeup, I'm still so unbelievably selective with what I end up purchasing. That being said, going back to the subject matter of this Shop My Stash video, there's so much in my collection that is worth re-exploring or exploring for the first time. All that said, I'm just going to throw on some eyebrows off camera. And when we return, we're gonna dive into some eyeshadow. 
let's be honest, it's Halloween year round on this channel, baby. Oh, now that the sun's gone down. I do have blackout curtains, but they don't take up the entire window. So once the sun starts going down, I'm just gonna throw a bit of this Rare Beauty lip oil on, almost as a lip prep moment, but it also adds a nice base color to whatever lip I'm concocting today. And eventually when the oil itself is absorbed into the lips, it leaves a nice little stain. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing on the eyes itself. I think because the shirt is quite warm toned, I wanna keep it in this arena here. Maybe a touch of this on like the lower lash line because the suit I'm wearing is green and I am rapidly running out of time to accomplish this. So I'm going to keep it pretty simple today. One of these days, we'll get back to something a little bit more intricate. For now, it's just go time. Starting off with a little primer potion. And as much as I miss having nails right now, it is so nice to be able to go in with a finger and really easily just tap things out. Let's do a little blend of Starless and Somber with Follow My Shadow because I love that orange, but I wanna mute it down just a tiny bit. Let's give her a whirl. Oh, that is really gorgeous. I apologize that under time constraints, I'm unable to do anything that revolutionary. It's gonna be a quick, dirty blend. I know that historically, Gimme Glow Cosmetics has sometimes a bit of trouble layering and blending on top of each other, but we're gonna feel the fear and do it anyway. So tonight's event is the season announcement for the 2025 season at Arts Club. And they always invite alumni to attend the season announcement. And it almost just feels like a tease, you know? Cause your hope with every new season that there's gonna be something, at least one show in that season that will be in your wheelhouse as a performer. Cause ultimately your employment will hinge on what they're programming for that season. So, you know, a wee bit of anxiety going into this event tonight, but also lots of excitement because a lot of their next season is a complete and total mystery to us. They like to keep things pretty tight lipped for good reason. Cause actors are notorious for being the worst gossips amongst themselves. I am lumping myself into this category. I am self reading right now, just FYI. We wanna be good Judies to each other and like help each other out, give each other the most information that we possibly can because we all wanna see each other succeed. And if an actor in the community caught wind of that kind of leak, you know it would be everywhere. Thank it's been you. a while since the people have looked up my nose. <laughs> Daniel's coming to deliver me tea. Say hi to the people, Daniel. Hello, people, Daniel. <laughs> the pinnacle of comedy. I know, right? I really should do stand up. You are missing your calling. And even if something in their upcoming season is good for you, ultimately it's out of your control. You can go in there and absolutely decimate your audition. You could nail it to the wall. And regardless of how good you are, the director just might not see it. And that's completely within their right and their prerogative. Being in theater is definitely a lesson in humility. Keeps you humble. All right, finished with that for now. Let's take a little bit of Hail to the Pumpkin King. This is the shade that I've been dying to know about. Ooh, yep. Love the color. Is blending out okay? A little bit drier than my preference when it comes to formulas. All things considered though, it's blending really nicely. Dragging that up and out. And because you know, our community is quite small, you can almost guarantee any social event or opening night, you're probably gonna know a large majority of the attendees, which once I'm in it, once I'm there and talking to people and reconnecting with people, I love. But of course, leading up to the event, I do have a modicum of anxiety about any large social gathering. It's just gonna be a lot of people I know all in one space. And so my focus is just gonna be pulled in all sorts of directions. And I'm sure a lot of people feel similarly when they're in that situation. So for myself personally, I just end up ping-ponging from person to person all night and you want to give each person the energy and attention that they deserve. So more often than not, I usually end up coming home feeling incredibly drained and depleted. That's just who I am though as an introvert. Some people really thrive in those situations and actually, and for those people, you know, it really fills their cup when they are in a room full of people that they admire and like. So the social element coupled with the anticipation of 
of what's to come in the next season. Trying not to spiral in public about your potential employment in the year ahead. And a wise, logical person would probably tell me, Maddie, just enjoy your friends and take this as an opportunity to be proud of the community that you are a part of. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know. So I'm just going to try to enjoy myself tonight. It's not that deep. Take my selfishness out of the equation and just be excited about what's to come. Because in the end, it'll boil down to two options. You're either going to be in it with a bunch of people that you love, or you're going to be in the audience watching a bunch of people you love. You know, can't really go wrong there. I'm going to play with fire here a bit and um, do a taints more deepening with do not carve. I'm going to try to hit you over the head with the pumpkin theme. Mm, yeah, see right there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's getting a little patchy now, which is pretty indicative of a Give Me Glow Cosmetics experience. So we won't use it too, too much. We'll just very slightly deepen up that outer edge, not take it too far up. That should be safe. With Give Me Glow's matte formula, for the most part, if you just do enough finessing without adding too much product on top of itself, you'll end up with a decent blend. It just might take a little longer than a formula that's a titch more user-friendly. So even though I'm in a rush, you just have to have that inch more of patience and usually it pays off. Yeah, you can kind of see where it's starting to hiccup here. Wiggling a tiny bit of that under the lashes. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get for this evening. So let's move Move ahead, slap that into the waterline. I do love a chocolate brown in the waterline. It's a little softer than a black, but it still delivers all that smoky goodness. I do think I want a little bit more of a sparkly shimmer, which I don't think these will deliver. Let me just go look over here. When in doubt, all I ever wanted volumes one and two. There's gotta be something in here. Oh. Oh yeah. This is Stoker from volume two. We're gonna go with that. Oh yeah, that's going on our eyeballs. A little bit of Glimmer Grasp. Just on the inner third. Let's just do it and see what happens. I'm sorry, what? That's some good shit. It's perfect. It's this amazing, warm, orangey bronze, but it's got this gold glitter fleck running through it. It's perfect. I mean, wow, good grief. I have never used that shade until this very moment and... I was not disappointed. Because of the green suit, I do still think I wanna throw in just like a hair of this shade. Do you hear that? Just on the inner third of the lower lash line, I'm just kind of smudge it in, just a dab of it. Dipping back into Hail to the Pumpkin King, I just wanna blend this a little bit. Ever so slightly going back into that darkest shade so carefully. the most fallout I've ever seen. I think I'll leave that there for now for the eyeshadow situation. Throwing on a quick coat of mascara. Don't let me forget bottom mascara. That's, that's your job. I don't make the rules. Just me buffering. Do I want to do a full? No. <laughs> Didn't even get through that. To go back to our conversation about theater companies. Yes, the community is small and in the grand scheme of things, there are only a handful of opportunities for employment in this city. And historically in Canada, lots of theater artists will work across the country because while this community is quite small here on the West Coast, Canadian theater as a whole is quite a small group of people. A lot of the times we as artists have to seek employment elsewhere across the country. And that's typically pretty common. However, comma, because of the pandemic. Hold on, I need to concentrate while I do this. One eternity later. Sorry, I had to really concentrate on that. <laughs> a lot of theater companies across Canada are really struggling financially because of the pandemic. What normally would be a very common practice is now considered too great of an expense for a theater company to put up an out-of-towner. Most companies these days are focusing 
on keeping their casting local. Unless of course it's a co-production where two theater companies from different provinces share the cost of one show and tour it, splitting the cast and crew up equally, which I personally love doing. I love getting to know artists from outside of the West Coast. You know, just one of those situations where your real lashes are just so stuck together with glue that it's hard to tell where the fake lashes end and the real ones begin. Let's quickly finish up the rest of the face. If I finish in the next 10 minutes, I have time to eat something before we leave and I really want to do that. Going in with a little Pat McGrath Galactic Sun because of course we are. Again, the lament of discontinuing literally everything. Also, I think I said the wrong name for this highlighter when I was pulling it. Pretty sure this highlight name is Golden Nectar, which they might sell separately these days. Oh, I was gonna put that in the inner corner. Elf stay all day, you can't go wrong. And I will continue to shout that from the rooftops until I am released from this mortal coil. Thank you for reminding me. I need to come through. The urge to put on more blush is palpable, but the cheek situation looks so good right now. Why do I want to ruin a good thing? Because she had the too much gene, sir. She can't help herself, sir. It's not her fault. Throw on a liner. Also, see how that Rare Beauty lip oil just kind of absorbed into the lips but left that really nice stain? Gorgeous 90s dream. Starting with Spice from Unearthly Cosmetics. I mean, come on. Like we get it, you're the most amazing gloss on the planet, we know. And just a hint of drizzle in the center. I want a little bit more contrast. Not me trying to perfect this look when I literally, as soon as I get off camera, I'm going to cram as much leftover macaroni and cheese casserole into my gullet as I can. I think we're done. Just gonna soften this lip line ever so. Literally nothing I put on my face these days has a hard edge to it. All right, folks, I'm gonna call it there. That is a wrap on this Shop My Stash video. I thought it was incredibly successful. Listen, this is just a reskin of a look that I have done at this point countless times on my channel. But when I'm in a time crunch, this kind of eyeshadow look always comes in clutch. It's classic, it's easy, and I can pull it off when I'm partially distracted by attempting to hold a one-sided conversation with you all. What do you all think? Do you guys think Shop My Stash should have a resurgence? And I hope you all enjoyed the mini tour of the new studio. And let me know if y'all enjoy this little theater chat once in a while. I know it's just local Canadian theater, but it's my life. So if it interests you, I'll just keep kind of throwing it in whenever I have something to share. But that is it for me, folks. I'm going to love you and leave you. But before I do, please let me rattle off the spiel to you. Here are the many ways that you can help out my channel. You can give this video a big thumbs up. You can comment down below what you thought of everything. You can subscribe. Any and all engagement with this video is crucial to its success in the algorithm. So if you have a few spare seconds, please engage with this video. You can follow me on Instagram. I will leave that right there. I mean, you can follow me on TikTok and the platform formerly known as Twitter. You're not gonna find me there. I'm not gonna be there, but you can if you want. But it will be on Instagram. And go see a show, folks. Go see some local theater in your community, if you're able to, financially. Without a shadow of a doubt, I can almost guarantee that they could really use your support right now. And with that, folks, please stay safe, wash your hands, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Because I just don't think... Oh my God. I got a man down. That was so terrifying. One sec. Listen, I'm an atheist and I don't believe in ghosts, but that was really weird. Two figurines off of this floating shelf just literally fell off the shelf, seemingly without any force behind them. I don't know how that happened. This building is too new to be haunted. Also ghosts don't exist. Ghosts don't exist, guys. I'm not willing to fight about that in the comments. <laughs> I support you if you believe in ghosts and that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs>